Hi everyone, it's Andrea here and I'm here today with my July book haul part two. Uh, as you remember a bit earlier, I showed you some of the books I bought at the beginning of July and that I also got for my birthday. Well, here's the rest. Ugh. Yeah, there's a lot of books. I had more money for books for my birthday as well from the guys at work and I haven't even spent that yet, so here we go. So um, these are in no particular order, so I'm just going to go through them really quickly. So first of all, we're going to show you is The Before Now and After Then by Peter Mon. I've already read this and I've done a review of it, which I'll link in the notes below. So if you wanted to check out the review, please do. It's a great book. I highly recommend it. I'm not going to tell you anything about it because obviously I've reviewed it. I also got James Patterson with David Ellis, The uh, Murder House. And it says, it was the setting for a series of depraved killings in the small seaside town of Bridgehampton that have never been solved. Neglected, empty and rumoured to be cursed, it's known as the murder house and locals keep their distance. Detective Jenna Murphy is hoping to escape her troubled past and rehabilitate a career on the rocks. But when a Hollywood power broker and his mistress are found dead in the abandoned murder house, Jenna becomes involved in a case that first seems open and shut, but, for, but soon reveals more secrets than she could possibly imagine. So... I do like James Patterson, I do like thrillers and murders, mysteries and things like that. So the next one is one that, again, Peter likes books, Peter Mon recommended, and I will put a link to his channel in the notes below, and that is Dumpling by Julie Murphy. I haven't read this yet, but I'm really, really excited about it. I can't wait to read this. Um, if you want to know more about it, check out Peter's channel, because he's done some information on it as well. Basically, it's the story of a teenager. Her name's Willow Dean Dixon. She's nicknamed named Dumpling by her former beauty hewing mom. Always been at home in her own skin. She owns the fact that she's overweight. Her thoughts on having the ultimate bikini body are, put a bikini on your body. So with her all-American beauty best friend by her side, things always worked until Will takes a job at Harpies, the local fast food joint. There she meets private school Bo, a hot former jock. And Will isn't surprised to find herself attracted to Bo, but she's surprised when he seems to like her back. So yeah, so basically she gets a bit self-doubt and goes and enters a beauty pageant, which I love the idea of, so I'm really looking forward to reading that one. I finally picked up a copy of The Loney by Andrew Michael Hurley. I love the idea of this, it just sounds... Well, you know, it's, it sounds brilliant. Two brothers, one mute, the other his lifelong protector. Year after year, the family visits the same sacred shrine on a desolate strip of coastline known as the Loney in a desperate hope for a cure. In the long hours of waiting, the boys are left alone. They cannot resist the causeway revealed with every turn of the treacherous tide and the old house they glimpse at, at its end. Many years on, Hanny is a grown man no longer in need of his brother's care, but then a child's body is found and the Loney always gives up its secrets in the end. So... Yeah, I saw this, um, I've seen this recommended, it's a, a Costa Book Awards winner from, 2000, from last year, 2015, and I'm really, really looking forward to reading that, quite excited about that, it's my, just my cup of tea. Next one's quite a thick book, it's called The Angel Tree, Angel Tree by Lucinda Riley. I like the cover on this one, and that's what attracted me to it, and basically 30 years have passed since Greta left Marchmont Hall, a grand and beautiful house nestled in the hills of rural Monmouthshire. Of course, Monmouth and Monmouthshire are only up the road from where I live, so that's always interesting as well. But when she returns to the hall for Christmas at the invitation of her old friend David Marchmont, she has no recollection of her past association with it. The result of a dreadful accident has blanked out more than two decades of her life. Then, during a walk through the wintry landscape, she stumbles across a grave in the woods, and the weathered inscription on the headstone tells her that a little boy is buried there. With David's help, Greta embarks on a quest to, re to recover her long-lost memories and begins to piece together the fragments of not only her own story, but that of her daughter, Cheska, the tragic victim of circumstances but under control, and most definitely not the angel she appeared to be. A story of love and loss from best-selling author Lucinda Riley, first published under the name Lucinda Edmonds and now extensively rewritten. Sounds interesting. I love books like this. The next one, again, is one of my favourite types of story, and it's a historical fiction, ancient history historical fiction, Cleopatra's Shadow by Emily Holman. Abandoned by a beloved older, older sister Cleopatra and an indifferent father, Arsinoe, a young Egyptian princess, must fight for survival in the bloodthirsty royal court after her half-sister Berenice seizes power. 
As Arsenio struggles to establish herself in an uncertain new world, the usurper Berenice has her own demons to confront. Shadowed by the ever-present threat that their father and Cleopatra will return from exile, Berenice fights to hold the throne as the first queen of Egypt in a thousand years. Now, I love Egypt. I have quite a lot of Egyptian books. They are below waist height, so they're actually on the fourth and fifth shelf, so you can't see them, but I will do them in a book to show you them in a book tour at some point. So I've recently read one Egyptian, ancient Egyptian story, fictional story, um, called The Sekhmet Bed, which will be reviewed in my wrap up. Um, and so I thought, I've got to get this. And the cover, look at all the gold foiling on the cover. It's just absolutely stunning cover. The hardback must have been beautiful, if there was one. But it, it looks like a great story. So next one, I went into the works when they were having their annual clear out and bought three books for a pound. Um, one of which was a Dennis Mina Still Midnight. Well, they were a pound each, not three for a pound. That would have been really cool. And um, basically this is, uh, the quiet of a Glaswegian suburb is shattered with a brutal and baffling attack. Our men invade a family home, shouting for a man nobody's heard of. A shot is fired and they escape with a hostage and a demand for two million pounds. It's a high profile case that could make DS Alex Morrow's career if only she gets the chance. Aggressive, ambitious and desperately trying to conceal the skeletons in her closet, she's doing herself no favours. As Morrow delves deeper into the case, she realises she's not the only one with something to hide and in her search to uncover one's family secrets, she must protect her own. Ooh. Can you notice I kind of like murder mysteries and thrillers? Now, two of the ones here that I, I read for book two bathon that I bought this month were Billionaire by Peter James. I've reviewed that on my blog. It's there. I'll link the, put the link to the blog below so you can go and read the review. It was a good story, but again, will also be mentioned in the wrap up. And Confessions of a Showbiz Reporter by Holly Forrest. Again, I've, I've talked about this in my booktubeathon wrap up, so I'm not going to go into details that. But again, they were bought this month. Again, another one that I got from the works for, for, for a pound is James Rollins' The Last Oracle. Mankind needs a new prophet. And this is a sort of book, book I really love. I sort of like, I call them archaeological thrillers because there's a lot of archaeology, sort of Tomb Raider, Indiana Jones, Lara Croft stuff going on. And I just love those. In Washington, D.C., a homeless man dies in the arms of Commander Gray Pierce, clutching a bloody, a bloody even, coin in his hand, an ancient artefact that could unlock a plot threatening the very foundation of humanity. Meanwhile, a group of international scientists are engineering children with exceptional talents into something far greater, far more frightening, a world profit for the new millennium. One to be manipulated to create a new era of global peace, a peace on their own terms. Woo! So yeah, that one looks quite freaky as well. Next is Harlan Coben, The Stranger. I do like Harlan Coben. Obviously, recently over here we had his uh, mini-series, The Five which, if it was written into a book, it would be like, like 3,000 pages long. It was absolutely horrendously huge. Brilliant. I think it was 10 episodes long-ish. Brilliant story. Very Harlan Coben. Just loved it. The twists and turns were great. So I thought, I'm going to pick up some Harlan Coben. So this one says, Adam Price has a lot to lose. A comfortable marriage to a beautiful woman, two wonderful sons, and all the trappings of the American dream. A big house, a good job, a perfect life. But then he meets a stranger in a bar and he learns a devastating secret about his wife. Have I read this to you before? Because it seems ever so familiar. With a mirage of perfection shattered, Adam finds himself caught up in something darker than he realised. If he doesn't make it right, the right moves, the conspiracy he stumbled into will not only ruin lives, it will end them. Either that, or I read so many books that are so similar, the plots are all mirroring into one. You never know with me. Next on the list is one of the books that was recommended, but Jesse the Reader's favourite book. He wants everybody to read this book, and that is, of course, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. I bought this when I bought something else. I can't remember. Oh, the, the, the Clash of Kings, so I could read the second in A Song of Ice and Fire. And I'm not going to read the blurb because it's been everywhere on booktube. The film's coming out soon. I love this book. Again, my battery's about to die, so that's not good. So anyway, but not only did I love that one, I also went out and bought Hollow City and whatever this one's called, The Library of Souls. Yay! Because I want to read the rest of it. I left it, lent the first one to my mum and it's knackered. So only two to go. I'm hoping I'll do it before the battery actually goes. The next one I bought is a hardback of Daphne du Maurier's Jamaica Inn. I go to Cornwall a lot, we pass Jamaica in a lot. 
there's a whole family legend that surrounds that place we're not going to go into it so it's one I've never read so I'm really really looking forward to this finally the last book because we're on the 30th and I don't plan on buying any books tomorrow but you never know I might it was actually bought on the 1st of July in Tenerife and it's more a guidebook than a, than a reading book but it is a book on Laura Park and the other side is Scion Park, which is the Water Kingdom, but Laura Park is, I think, the second best wildlife reserve in the, in the centre in the world. Certainly the best in Europe. All the animals at Laura Park have been rescued, apart from the puffins, from either... Um, circuses, zoos or private collections. Um, and I think they said that the, the American alligators actually came from Germany, from a German zoo. So yeah, the, the penguins. So they're all rescue animals. They've, none of them have been taken out of their habitat, except for the puffins, because the puffins are so, there's so many of them. But I do like to get guidebooks wherever I go, so I had to get that one. So those are all the books from July. Um, next month I'm getting my first subscription box from Illumicrate, and I will be doing an unboxing for you when that arrives. I'm looking forward to that. I'll be back in a couple of days with my monthly wrap up and that's it for now. I hope you read lots and buy lots of books because yay books. Sorry, <laughs> no, I haven't been well saying I've banging headache, but yes. So happy reading everybody and I will see you soon.